This is question six, paper 2-2 from the June 2020 exams from Cambridge International Education. Up the top right of the screen, you'll find a card bringing you to other solutions from this paper. You can also find a link to an image of this question in the description below. And I recommend you try the question before looking at my solution. In this question, they give us a polynomial here, Px. And that polynomial is 6x cubed plus ax squared minus 4x minus 3. They also tell us that x plus 3 is a factor of this polynomial. And the first question they ask us then is to find the value of a. So there's a couple of ways to do this. Uh, one, I'm not going to do it this way. I think I'll use this in the second part though. x plus 3 divided into this. And we know that we'll divide in evenly. At the end, once we divide in here, at the end we'll get 0 as a remainder. And that means we'll get an equation for a. Because really at the end we'll get like something like, 3 plus a equals 0. So we'll be able to solve for a. Actually, I'm not sure what is a. We'll find out in a moment. Um, but an easier way is, if this is a factor, that means x equals 3 must be a root, is a root. Which that means if we put in, sorry, that should be minus 3. If we put minus 3 into this equation here, we we'll get 0. And that's because we know this is a factor, then this is a root, and that's how roots work. So if we go ahead and put minus 3 in instead of x throughout this equation, let's write that out. 6 and minus 3 cubed plus a minus 3 squared minus 4 times minus 3 minus 3 at the end. And that will equal 0. So now we have an equation, there's only one unknown. So it's really just about putting the numbers in. Go ahead, use a calculator. But minus 3... Um, cubed is 27, or minus, minus, minus is a minus. So uh, 6 times minus 27, I have the numbers done out there somewhere. 162, uh, this one we can do in our head. Minus 3 squared is 9, 9a. Minus 4 by minus 3 is plus 12, and then minus 3 at the end. Uh, let's see, we have 9a, and if we put all of this in, just checking my numbers, we get 9a minus um, 153 equals 0. 9a is equal 153. a is equal 153 divided by 9, which means a is equal to... Sorry, my a's look like 9's. I apologize for that. I've always thought, can I change that somehow? Anyway, a is equal to 17. So that's the answer to part a. That brings us on to part B, where they ask us to use this value of A, so I've replaced A with 17 here, and to factorise this completely. So that means uh, we have P here is equal to this. They want to break Px um, up into, well, one of them would be x plus 3, and then um, one or two brackets here. I'm guessing two brackets. Well, I know the answer, actually. But I'm guessing two brackets because they say completely, factorise it completely. So we want uh, two numbers, two uh, values that are here. Um, there's a couple of ways to do this. One way I would do it is just make up something that should be here. Should be something like ax squared plus bx plus c. Sorry, different a than part one. I've just made this a up. And we could solve for all these numbers. And it's actually quite difficult because we know the answer. We know the answer is going to be this guy here. We know what px is. And it's actually a lot easier than you think because x times x squared, x cubed, a must be a 6. Only a 6 here would make this work. So, um, well, I'm not going to do it this way, but so I won't, I won't continue on. But I know a is 6 quite easily. Also, the only number that can get minus 3 is the two numbers, 3 and c. So c must be minus 1. I've solved that one now. Then it's quite easy to get b, um, bx times x gets at x squared. The only other place an x squared comes from is 3 times this 6, six uh, x squared here. It's actually it's so easy, I might, I'd nearly be able to do it right now in my head. But I've already decided I'll show you a different way to do it. Feel free to try this way, ask me in the comments um, for any help you need. Another way to do it is, and it's just my more favourite way of doing it, I'd say this is probably a little faster, but um, I've always liked doing this way, is to divide the factor in. Divide this factor into this one here. x cubed plus 17x squared minus 4x 
minus 3. Now, either of these ways will only get you this quadratic. We'll still have to break this quadratic up. Um, but we're, we've been used to doing that for years. Okay, to divide in, uh, x goes into 6x cubed, 6x squared times. And then let's we double check our work by multiplying this by the x. And as we would expect, we get the same thing here. But we multiply this then by the 3, because this still has to be done. If this divides into this, then this multiplied by this will equal this. So uh, 3 by 6 is um, 80 in x squared. And we take it away. See how close we were. We were perfect here, which is good. <laughs> take this away from this. We get minus x squared. And we continue on. We could write these every line. But we just save time. We only take down what we need. Um, okay, so how many times does x go into minus x squared? Is minus x. Uh, we double check our work. Minus x by x is minus x squared. Minus x by 3 is minus 3x. We take this away. We get 0, minus 4x, minus, minus 3. That becomes plus 3. We get a minus x here again. Uh, let's see, minus x. Oh, we're taking down minus 3. How many times does this go into this? Uh, minus 1. Minus 1 times x is minus x. Minus 1 times 3 is minus 3. And it goes in perfect, which is good. <laughs> we were expecting it to go in perfect. So here's a part of our factorization px is equal x plus 3 multiplied by 6x squared minus x minus 1. So that's factorized. It's not completely. They asked us to completely factorize it. Basically, they just want us to break this one up. So if we just continue on, we've been doing that for years now. Um, break this guy up into two parts. We need two numbers to multiply to get x, uh, 6x squared. That's difficult because there's a few choices there. It could be... 6x and x, it could be 2x and 3x, yeah, or 3x and 2x. Uh, luckily though, the 1 here, because we need two numbers to multiply to get like 1. Well, there's only 1 and 1 will do that. So can we make anything work? We need to fill in 6 and 1, 2 and 3, or 3 and 2. Uh, let's see, 2 and 3 looks like it'll work. 2 and 3, or 3 and 2, because 1 is the same. Um, so let's see, we need a we need a minus here, so one has to be a minus, and we need these guys, we need 2x and 3x to get minus one. So we need this guy to be a minus and this to be a plus. So that's how I'll make him a minus, because he multiplies by the one, and we'll make him a plus. And I think that all works, let's double check. One by one is minus one, uh, 2x minus 3x is that, 3x times 2x. That's our answer. That's fully factorized. If I had to continue the way I went before, like I said, that would have been a 6. That would have been a minus 1. And we would have found that to be a minus 1 as well. And we would have still had to do this factorization. All right, I, I guess that is longer than the way, because I was able to do most of this in my head. Um, so I guess that is longer, which whichever you rather. I just like how beautiful this cancels out when you divide in algebraically. All right, let me rub this out and we'll do part C. Okay, part C gives us this question. Um, the polynomial, so first of all, students are, were confused by this, P of cosec uh, theta. This is just the same polynomial. Instead of having X in there, we're having this thing. Everywhere you see an X, we're writing this. That's the first thing to confuse people. The second thing um, is a lot of students aren't used to cosec, especially uh, depending where you are in the in the world studying maths. And um, this is just one divided by sine theta, and then that's equal to zero. So yeah, we just need to fill this in to this long polynomial, but we don't need to do that either because we already have it factorized. So if this equals zero, well that means one over sine theta plus three equals zero. Or, uh, yeah, let me continue this on like this. Or uh, a 3, 3 multiplied by 1 over sine. So I'll just write in 3 over sine. 3 over sine theta uh, plus 1 equals 0. Or another possibility is 2 over sine theta minus 1 equals 0. So I'm getting this from each of the factors. I'm just putting in 1 over sine instead of x. 
1 over sine instead of x, and 1 over sine instead of x. And that's um, one of these is the answer, or maybe there's multiple answers here. The, the question gives us a clue, hence solve the equation. Um, does it though? No, often it, it tells you find the answers, if there's more than one answer. I guess there is more than one answer in this question, so it doesn't give us a clue really. If we just go ahead and solve this, bring the 3 over, it becomes minus 3. I'll do this one slowly and the other one's faster. 1 over sine theta is equal to minus 3. Uh, multiply both sides by sine. 1 is equal to minus 3 sine theta. And divide both sides by minus 3. So we get sine theta is equal to minus 1 over 3. So that would be one of these. Uh, if I continue, if I do the same thing here, minus 1, multiply across, divide across, we get sine theta is equal to minus 3. Do the same thing here, we get sine theta is equal to 2. Now this is a problem. Sine theta, let me draw it here quickly. I'm going to use it again in a minute. There's a, let's continue it on as well. Continue it on. There's up to 2 pi here. Or, sorry, they use, um, they use degrees up to 360, up to 180. I'm going to use this in a minute, so I might as well stay there. Uh, this number, the highest this number gets is 1. The lowest this number gets is minus 1. So how could sine theta equal minus 3? It never will. Minus 3 is down here somewhere. So that's not a correct answer. When will sine theta equal 2? It never will. That's not a correct answer. I've just taken up half my board with uh, wrong answers, so I better make a little bit of room. So we're only left with this one here. This is the only one that's possible. Sine theta is equal to minus 3. Uh, sorry, minus 1 third. So here's a minus 1 third about here. So here's one answer. Here's another answer. Here's another answer. There's more answers over here. And it continues on forever. There's infinite answers. Uh, but they don't want all of them. They only want the answers between 0 and 360. So here's the two answers. We know roughly what they are. 180 plus a little bit, so we'll say about 200. And 360 minus a little bit, we'll say about 340. So I know roughly what the answers are. Let's find out the exact numbers. Put this, well, don't put this into a calculator. Take the inverse sine of both sides. Theta is equal to the inverse sine of minus 1 over 3. Don't get too afraid by all these minuses. The calculator will take care of all of this. Now, I believe calculators will uh, give you different answers. Some calculators will give you this as their first answer. Calculator, some calculators look for the first answer in this world, between 0 and 360. But my calculator, and so therefore some of your calculators, will actually give you a minus 19.5. So my calculator gives me this answer here. Because what my calculator does, it looks between minus 180 and plus 180 and gives me the first answer it finds. And this is the first answer it knows. So minus, uh, 100, minus uh, 19.5 is one answer. So we need to use this number to find this number here. If this is 19.5 away, this is 19.5 away. Because it's symmetrical. So 180 plus 19.5 is 199.5 and let me clean give myself a bit more room because like I said there's infinite answers 19.5 away from 360 is 340 um, yeah 340.5 let me just double check that is what I got yeah okay and we get more answers up here more answers would be Let's see, 360 plus this one would be 559.5. No, we're not going to need this. You already know we're not going to need this. But we get more answers here. If we stay going into the minus world, you get more answers. But I can just say, this one is not right. They don't want anything less than zero. They don't want anything bigger than 360. Here's our two answers. And this is the, uh, the full marks for the question. Theta is equal to 1, 9. 9.5 um, and put a bracket or an or or theta is equal 
0.5. Usually I just put a, um, this line here in fact it would be perfect. Theta is equal this, comma, this. There's your multiple choices for the answer. Okay, uh, hopefully that answers all your questions. Um, if you have any more questions though, put them in the comments below and I'll do my best to answer. Thanks for watching, have a great day.